ليكن يومك للشعب ودادا ليكن حبك للأرض مدا للأرض مدا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very easy for him, for us to, to live with one another with this divine cover. Because if we should know what people conceal in their mind for us, we will not be able to live peacefully with them. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In this episode, we are looking at one of those greatest favor of Allah on man. And that is what I tag as a divine cover with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers our misdeeds, our mistakes. Can you imagine a kind of word whereby the misdeeds of people stings like rotten egg? I mean those who gamble, those who steal, those who tell lie and they have a kind of odor that comes along with it. I wonder how awful this life will be, will, be, will, be, will be like. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not do that. He covered us up with this his divine cover that will not allow people to perceive these odors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very easy for him, for us to, to live with one another with this divine cover. Because if we should know what people conceal in their mind for us, we will not be able to live peacefully with them. But because of the mercy of Allah, He covers this up and uh, we can live with ourselves based on what we can find in mind. And that is why in Islam, it is not a condition for forgiveness that somebody should uh, confess his sin. It's not a part of Islam that you need to come out in the masjid and say, Oh, I've done this, I've done that, oh, now I'm repenting. No, you don't do that because of what will cause. That will cause a lot of rancor among ourselves. You can imagine somebody coming out to convince that he has committed adultery with somebody's wife in the masjid. Even if he says he has forgiven, in his mind he will know that this man has not done well to me. I will start an example of um, how human mind works because our minds work in, the, in such a way that um, you tend to love those who have done good to you and you tend to hate those who have not done well to you. A man called Wahshi was a slave in Mecca. He was the one that was hired to kill Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu during the Battle of Uhud. So they killed Hamza and they even mutilated his body. And it pained the Prophet so much that, ah, ah, how can this Kufar do this? Now, by the time the Mecca fell under Islam, then this man fled to another place. Even at that place, Islam was spreading. So he had nowhere to hide again. So he was advised to come to the Prophet Sallam to come and uh, uh, accept Islam. As he came, the Prophet Sallam recognized him. He said, Anta Wahshi, are you Wahshi? He said, yes, I'm Wahshi. You did this, so, 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 you did He said, yes. Then he said, well, now that you have converted to Islam, your previous sin will be forgiven and I don't have any capacity to take any, any revenge from you. But can you assist me by keeping this your face away from me? I don't want to be seeing your face because once I see your face, I will also remember that's my uncle that you killed. What does that tell us? That even though you may forgive, but you will not be able to forget because you are not Allah. Allah is the Gafur al Rahim, is one that is merciful, and after forgiving, he will still bestow mercy. In fact, you may even go to the extent of converting the evil deed to good deeds is Allah. But human being we always have that at the end of mind that oh this man did, especially if he does it again. And that is why we are advised that we should not remove that cover. The Prophet said, Kullu ummati mu'afa illa al mujahirun. All my followers will be forgiven, will be pardoned, except those who expose their misdeeds. Then he explained further, Inna mna li mujahara an yamala rajulu bil layli amalan. What you call exposing oneself is somebody doing a misdeed in the night. Then nobody saw him then. Thumma yusbah, he wakes up in the morning. Then Allah has covered him, then we now remove that cover. Ya fulan, abantu libari akada wa kada. The last night I did this, I did that. Removing the cover of Allah. And that, with that cover, Allah may forgive him. 
But now that he has removed the cover, then he will not uh, be pardoned again. So sin is not something that you are boastful of. You boast of. What you need to do is to seek forgiveness, and you should be very sincere in that uh, seeking forgiveness. You repent to Allah sincerely, and this is the time to do it. The time of Ramadan, because the forgiveness of Allah is so massive, so 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 big, so wide that accommodates everything. Once you have made up your mind that you are not going back to that sin again. So what you also do that is wrong, make sure you repent. And you need to know that repentance to Allah sometimes may also require that you return people's rights to them. Things are hard today because some people are taking the right of others. Why don't you return it to them? Because on the day of Qiyamah, there's going to be a court for that. A court where people will settle their rancors. You cheated me on this, I want it back. And then you don't have money to pay then you don't have anything to, 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 to relieve yourself except by using the reward of your good deed. If you can settle it in this world, why don't you just do it and not delay it till when you are going to be required to spend out of your scarce reward that can scarcely take you to agenda. My dear brother, don't remove the divine cover of Allah on you. Rather, you should try as much as possible to make it take away. Pray Allah to forgive our shortcomings. Subhanak Allahumma, nashad an la ilaha ila anta, nastakutu bilika subhanu rabbika, wa izati yazifun, wa salamu salim, wa alhamdulillah, wa salamu alaykum.